Hi, welcome to The Pebble, and I am so pleased to be hosting Daniel, my number one fan, <laughs> and also a brilliant friend from across the pond who has a fabulous love, yes, a fabulous love and collection of Japanese animation from across a good amount of decades, but especially the 90s, right, Daniel? Well, correct. And that I'm going to start with letting him show you um, a good set of that collection. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. That's too the deep, by the way. And VHS. Um, Yes, I do have the DVDs as well, but I haven't got around to sorting those out. So it's mainly sort of an, an ADV films shrine. <laughs> but uh, yeah, kind of a midlife crisis, we call it. <laughs> <laughs> and when he says midlife, he's still a, a, a he solid decade younger than I. So um, we'll, 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 we'll call that early midlife, okay? <laughs> <laughs> And um, we'll start with that. You mentioned ADV, and that is how um, Daniel and I became friends, is um, and how he found me. And so I will let you tell that story, Daniel, because it makes me feel very happy. Okay, so basically, um, in 1996, um, AD Vision. Uh, obviously, at the time, I didn't I didn't know that much about it. Um, in 1996, they actually decided to open an office in the UK. So initially, it was in North Wales, and um, they started off the first debut titles were Gunsmith Cats and Dragon Hat. And then I think Skabon Decker came a few months later, Princess Minerva. So basically, um, they started off uh, with VHS um, and um, they, they basically wanted to release some of the titles that the parent company in Houston uh, released. So that's how I basically found out about them. And we got um, quite a lot of dubbed titles. And in the beginning, they released like both formats, the subtitles and the dubbed, and um, didn't quite work as well as it, as it did in America. So um, it only lasted like a few months and then they stopped, they stopped that basically. Um, but because we've got mainly the, the dubbed titles, I got to to know of the the at the time it was um, an in-house uh, Houston uh, studio, Industrial Smoke and Mirrors, um, that they used. Um, there were actually a few um, titles that ADV released in America um, when they first started, but we actually did get them, but not through ADV. So things like Guy, um, uh, which was Tiffany's first up role. Um, and we also got Double Hunter Yoko as well, but again, under a different um, distributor, but it was ADV's dub. So actually, we actually did get ADV an ADV dub two years before ADV decided to set up shop in the UK. Um, so, yeah, that, like I said, that's how I basically found out about them. And then after that, I, I basically sort of thought, oh, my God, this, this company is amazing. So I... I kind of got like international calling cards and I would ring them uh, the office in Houston to find out if they would tell me what titles they were thinking about releasing in the UK. Officially um, a super fan. Yes essentially mm -hmm. yes um, and um, my favourite at the time was was Tiffany and and still kind of is and obviously you're one of my favourites as well. Tiffany um, star you don't yeah. like like that yeah. is okay I I'm a fan of Tiffany too. Well, the thing is, if somebody had told me all these years ago that you would eventually get to converse with them over social media, because I, like I say, there wasn't a great deal, like I said to you last time, there wasn't a great deal of information um, back then, you know, for voice actors in Japan, they are sort of more famous in the sense that they've got proper um like careers based around um not not to say that you know uh western voice actors don't but it's it in in terms of they they will sing the uh theme tunes and um 
you know, they'll be so much more sort of involved with the shows themselves. And I always wanted to ask um, sort of how much you sort of get told about the shows that you worked on, you know, and, and things like that. Because, I mean, Skate on Decker was actually um, released in Japan about four years, I think, before ADV started um, sort of uh, releasing it. Um, I, I think the, am I right in thinking, I know it was a long, 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 long time ago, but am I right in thinking that the, the first one was like dubbed in maybe like late 1995? Because the, the way that the timelines sort of go and release dates, and I remember like some, I know this is how dorky I am, remembering like the release, the original like American release dates. And I think Devil Hunter Yoko, the dub, because um, obviously it was released subtitle first several, when ATV first opened in, in Houston in 1992. That was actually one of their first titles. And then they didn't dub it until a few years later. But I reckon it must have been around the same sort of time when uh, Amanda joined because it like late 1995, um, because you had like Burn Up and then I think Mighty Space Miners, and then she must have done Devil Hunt Yoko and Skate on Decca around about the same sort of time, because then they were released like early 1996. Um, and the, the, the geeky thing I've always wanted to know is sort of like how long it kind of like takes between sort of like actually dubbing something and then it coming out and how much you get told about these shows and, and things like that. So Skate on Decca was actually, like I say, one of the sort of like the, the, one, the shows where it was only like a few years after Japanese release. Um, there was obviously a lot of ones where it was only a few months, which is why it got such a reputation as being quite an innovative sort of like company. And that's what I quite liked about it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I've always wanted to know if you actually get told anything, because obviously Escape on Decker as well um, was actually based on, obviously most shows based on a manga right. um, in Japan. And also Escape on Decker also has a live action series as well, which I haven't actually got around to watching. But yeah, there's... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, share a great deal. I, I'm sad to say, um, after I got more involved, I got more interested in, in learning more about the art firm. I, I will tell you, Skavon Deco was my first. Um, Amanda and I were stage actors and together, and she uh, was the one who uh, brought me into ADV. Uh, she and I had played sisters as actors together on stage and so therefore she said I know who should play my sister <laughs> in Skate on Deca, um because we have um actually kind of similar voices and thought that we would be a good match in in the series and so mm -hmm. she was the one who um brought me in uh, to audition to be uh, together there. And then um, as she got more involved, she kept bringing me in. And I really didn't know anything, frankly, about the art form. Um, and that one was slower because they wanted to get ahead on the series. So they, um, the time between recording one and seeing it come to tape was longer, um, but by the time three was finished, it was quick. They mm -hmm. they they kept us recording, and then they went boom 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 in the production, so that the total trilogy was pretty quick as it came out. Now, spoiler alert: I was not in three, um, but uh, because the sisters. Uh, were um, not very nice to each other, but um, I was pretty. Well, actually, um, there was only, as far as I know, there was only two uh, anime OVAs, and obviously you were in part two up to a certain point. Right, and... okay, I guess, I'm sorry, it has been a bit, maybe that was- No, 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 no. I completely understand. You know, I, completely um, understand. I guess I just didn't, I didn't make it all the way to the end of two. I guess that was it, sorry. Yeah, you're in, you're in a good chunk of, of two. I, I almost forgot how, I think when I watched it recently, I almost forgot how much of part two you were in. Yeah, it's okay. Very, you know, but all yeah, right, she did, she did yeah. Kind of I just it don't, I don't quite but... make it. There's three sisters and, um, I um 
don't quite make it to the end of mm. but um also brilliantly other sisters brilliantly played by Renee Renee Forsman and uh, Marcy Ray as well who was obviously oh, Marcy I Ray, Ray obviously. that's right that's right yeah that's right Amanda was originally going to be and then Renee ended up being because Amanda ended up being part of the production part and Marcy was the other sister whom, with right. whom I had done they really brought the theater community in the the Houston theater community became the ADV community and mm -hmm. it was really a special part it was a great time actually the the Houston theater community was really thriving at that time that was before I went to acting school in San Francisco and it was a really great time in my life I was um engaged and then recently married and all of that time and it was before I went I left Houston and it was a really fun time and yeah but I didn't I honestly didn't know um, much about it and then I learned about it just after as I was doing it and um um I brought my friend Jessica Calvello in um as a kind of overlay uh she and I did a lot of work in the the children's theater side and I had met her and uh I knew with her voice because she also sings she's a glorious mm -hmm. singing voice and I knew she would be dynamite at it and she went on to be a star like I did I did some and then I went to acting school I brought her in and boom she exploded she um she was, she's absolutely amazing absolutely amazing I like to think of her as the um American equivalent of Kotono Mitsubishi who's like a massive uh say you in, well, in I'd Japan like to, I'd like to take credit for that because I'm the one who introduced her well yeah of course you know thank you so much for it for sort of like you well, know you know and see that's that's what you know kind of what this is all about is you never know the little things that you do that make but I didn't know I didn't know that Amanda was originally supposed to be Emi you know and I'm, I'm I'm trying to remember you know she might get on and say Chase Cooper wasn't right I you know <laughs> I, I maybe should cut that no, out no, obviously it's a very it was a very okay. very 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 long disclaimer time ago. that might not be correct I'm remembering a long time and I've had been a pause in COVID so we're just having a fun conversation here yeah. And I also liked, um, and I've, I've obviously told you like millions and millions and millions of times before, but I, I loved um, when you took over as uh, Shin Shin halfway through Elche as well. That was um, a delightful um, role. You, know? you didn't get to do the whole thing, but like, you know, I know sometimes recasts happen and things like that. It's just, it's just one of those things, but. Well, and it was, voice acting was a delight for me because um, I got to be cast against type especially when I was much younger I was always getting cast as you know the very sweet ingenue and um so but I my voice was more flexible and mm -hmm. so to be able to you know rah, you know and, and 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 kick and 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 use the lower register of my voice and and tell people you know you know what I'm gonna come to don't you <laughs> say it say it say it your favorite line <laughs> but honestly, I, I I know I'm gonna you're gonna be absolutely fed up with me by the time this No, is, no, I promise line, I will. Honestly, it's just like that. Well yes. just absolute goals. Just was it Mark Greenfield who did that the directing on that one? Or was I it did you say it was, it was a month? You know, yeah. I, should, I sure. you know I'm going to before I um before I post this, I promise I will do all the I'll have all the little streamers below to make sure I credit people. And Amanda, I will yeah, have to sure. fix whether or not you were supposed to be Amy. I'll, I'll text. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I will have all the, um, I'll make sure that with whomever directed, I think it was Mark. I just, you know, um, it was so long ago, but it really was a brilliant part of my life. But yeah, it was awesome to be able to be, you know, one of the best parts about acting is getting to be something you're not, right? Like mm. Susan Lucci, who evidently is n notoriously like the sweetest human being in the world. One of the reasons why she stayed on All My Children all those years was she loved playing the villain because she wasn't a villain, right? Like that was the fun part about it. 
And, you know, it was a time when I was in the Houston theater being like, um, you know, playing much younger usually than I was. And, you know, using this register of my voice and such. So like you said, I got to, you know, on, on the, on the cart, the, 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 the anime, I was kicking tables at people mm. and I, I walked like this and, you know, and so. And when you flashed Lady Cristel, Amanda's character in Elchir as well at the end in episode four, and it's like, come to your senses, my lady. First, it was Lord Felcus. If you don't stop this, you're going to murder your own father as well. You know, just yeah, that. And I even played boys, you know, I, yeah. there were several episodes in which I got to play because I did have that higher register. You know, a lot of people who don't follow animation in general don't realize um, how often there's um, cross casting. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, boys are often played by women. And then interestingly, um, like a few, uh, the, we have a very popular show over here called Bob's Burgers. Almost all of pairs, the pairs of it, yeah. are boys or men rather, but, you know, but I mean, so I played a lot of boys too. And it was just very fun to get to totally be free of what this was. It was all acting. It was pure acting like a child acting, right? And so it was a very, it was very freeing. And um, I think in Japan as well, they they tend to use the the female say you again for like male, uh, like especially young male uh, characters as well. So it's not it's not uncommon. I think it was in Golden Boy that I played uh, a boy. And mm. one of my characters, and I played multiple characters in Boogie. You were one of the Bob employees Stanton. in the first episode as well. Yeah, I played more than one in, in Golden yeah, Boy yeah. And, and Boogie Pop. And of course, whenever you do these, they also keep you, um, and you do lots of foleying. Like, uh, after you're there, they're like, okay, now just say these things. And you you just, like, have a sheet, and you go, hey, what's that? You know, you do all yeah. these so they can layer voicing. But it was um, it was a big pick-me-up, too. It was something that I took to acting school because I um, when I went to acting school, I went to school with some people who already had film and other things, like, under their belt that I didn't have. But I was able to be like, yeah, but I did this. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, it, 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 it was something that kind of grounded me, you know, and made me feel a little more, you know, something gave me a little lift in my step, you know? Yeah, definitely. And I think also like with social media now, like these days as well, it provides a platform for people to now actually be able to tell people, you know, I think also because when when you're like performing it's obviously different to performing on stage or anything like that because you're not getting that instant kind of reaction from people so i'm i'm sure it must be it must be really nice to kind of know that there's people out there who sort of like know you for what you what you did and you know and, and stuff like that you know it's, just being able to reach them in that way and then well, for them to be able to reach you I've 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 said it to you before and it's it's um Daniel met me um through me doing lives starting last spring I did about what four or five months of lives yeah. and Daniel found me there and he um told me how much the uh the, the anime voiceovers that I did uh, meant to him and I was blown away. I didn't think anybody knew that I did the six or seven. Why would, you not, why would you not think that? I mean, these tapes were literally like everywhere. I mean, like I say, AZB um, really opened an office here. So like I say, we we got all those dogs as well, you know, so it there's probably more show, people than think. You don't know what uh, what you do. Sometimes we underestimate our value. Mm. And that's one of the reasons that I wanted to start the Pebble is because it's, this isn't about me like 
it's about me wanting other people to realize that we do that to ourselves. And you taking the time to tell me that, you will never know. Like over the summer, I had a rough summer. You coming on my lives made me feel better. You impacted my life. Oh. And I want to, I want us all to start doing that for each other, you know? Yes. We need to know that we impact each other and that, you know, me spending a year or so with ADB and then a few months of me going up to Irvington, New York to make Boogie Pop in at Phantom, like, oh, there's my, there's my titles. Look at you. Two of, two of some. <laughs> I still, I still would love for you to sign these one day. <laughs> You know, I I am going to work that out. Um, I, you know, I now have family in London, so I am planning some time to get to England. But somehow, some way, we're going to work out that. I know. That's so cool. And um, but honestly, one of the things there's such little ways that we can make each other better and happier and it doesn't take that much, right? Mm. And so you taking your time today to be with me and to share your joy for all of the the animation. I mean, your collection's beautiful. It really <laughs> is. I think it's awesome. And um, and the fact that that I could be a part of that, um, and really does mean something to me because. I am telling you, like, I would never have thought the name Tracy Shannon sat beyond my Facebook friends, okay? Like, I mean, I appreciate my family and friends loving me, honestly. And 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 I'm, I've settled with the life of that being enough, and I'm good with that. The fact that there was a man in Liverpool, England, that thought Tracy Shannon was cool because she made these mean She was. So that's. <laughs> That really is awesome. Yeah. And now you are in my heart, and now you are going to be on my YouTube channel. And uh, if that means something to you, then we have now, and think how much bigger the circle is. And now, and we will continue with our pebbles, and we are just throwing them into the sea, right? And then our positivity circle is just like, boom. That's yeah. what I'm wanting for us. Definitely. Absolutely, and so you are now a part of that. You are part of our wave. I think it's. I think it's just. I like I was saying before, like um, reminiscing to a time when sort of everything was good, and you know, and just, just. I think I'm just trying to kind of like create a little uh, time capsule, <laughs> time capsule to a time where this, this, this hobby made me really really happy and I gave it up like 20 odd years ago and I still regret it now but I was able to start again almost from scratch obviously a lot more expensive this time around okay. but, um, I, but I've managed to find them all you know and even some extra ones that I never was really interested in at the time and then I've, I've kind of gone right I've got to get all these got to get all these sorts of thing I mean the DVDs are hidden under uh, a thing because I haven't got around to sorting those out yeah I need to get some like proper storage but the, the VA specials do it another um, second time and you'll have to show us this. Oh, gosh, yeah yeah definitely i mean the, the vhs is more important because i just thought i need to get all, get, get all those sources um but the dvds is going to be easier to kind of like stock because they obviously don't take, take up as much room and stuff like that but it's it's definitely a lot better this time around though because um a lot of you know because dvds around and obviously like we said um on the initial um sort of chat you know, back in the day of VHS, you had to make a choice of which format you wanted. And now you don't have to choose, it's all on one. So, you know, there's, th th I think that's a great medium for, especially for anime as well. So to be able to kind of have that all in one disc is just amazing because I remember how it used to be. 
Right. Um, you and, know, so that, now we can get to know each other and you couldn't yeah. have done that then. So No, exactly, exactly. And like I say, it just absolutely blows my mind that I'm actually getting to do this because, um, oh, that's what I wanted to say. There's a guy, I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce his surname. Um, his name's Chris. He's actually, I think he's in Tiffany Grant's um, fan club and he actually interviews um, sort of uh, voice actors um, who who work, work on anime and who have worked on anime. He managed to get Su Ulu uh, several months ago. So all, yeah, like all the old uh, sort of like AZB stuff. I'd love for him to kind of get um, you or um, Marcy Ray or um, Anne-Marie Lawless, uh, people like that, you know, who like the sort of early pioneers for for sort of anime. Um, and like I said to you before last time, you know, a lot of anime was actually dubbed here in the UK. But going back to earlier, what, what you said about sort of accents and things like that, uh, most of them were actually British actors putting on American accents to make the, yeah, to make the dubs more marketable. But there were actually a few that actually used British accents but they didn't actually, I, I believe back in the day, US Manga Courts, which is one of the other big uh, anime distributors in the US, they actually did a deal with manga entertainment in the UK. So that's why you can get, the, there's a lot of the UK dubs available in America. Obviously, again, like I say, British accents, uh, British actors putting on the accents, but it was a result of a deal. So that's why um, those are available in the US. Um, I believe Blue Sonic yeah. was supposed to be part of that deal as well, but for some reason, Manga didn't release it in the UK for another couple of years, and then we didn't get a dub. Um, sorry, we didn't get a sub, um, and they didn't get the dub. So, it, it yeah, the licensing um, was all a bit sort of uh, a bit random sometimes, and AZV actually um, managed to, uh, post a a Evangelion, managed to finance... Uh, a few titles on their own, independent of the Houston office. So they would actually uh, release some titles um, like Street Fighter V, which had already been released in the US by Manga. And then ADV actually got the clout to release the dub, do, do their own dub actually right, in, right. In, in Houston. Um, you see, Jason Douglas was uh, Ken. Right, um, that was a big deal. Yeah, that, that like I say, they Jason managed to. Douglas, do shout out to him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tag him because he's a such a fine Houston actor. Yeah, he's amazing. I absolutely love him. And then um, titles like Takigami, which again, it was released already been released in the US by US Manga Corps and Yotozen as well. But wow. that just shows how big they were at ATV were that they were able to release these titles exclusively in the UK um, where they'd already been released by another distributor in in the in the US right that is a, that's that's pretty huge it really is yeah definitely um like I say not a lot of people know that um and um but I when I was speaking to to Tiffany uh when I first sort of like joined her group and stuff like that and I was like asking her questions like oh did you know when you were dubbing this that it was exclusively for the UK and they knew um and then I think in a commentary for Ruin Explorers Kelly Manison who I absolutely adore um she also alluded to the fact that they knew that some of these titles were exclusively for the UK so yeah. we feel really on. I feel really honoured as a as a like as a fan that they they were able to release some of these titles exclusively for us. And I'm um in Tiffany's group. Uh, people are always jealous because I'll be sort of like talking about the Street Fighter Two V dub, the ADV one, and people are like, they, we didn't get, they don't have it. Yeah, and it's like we didn't get that here. Like, this and, group. Oh, we got it. Yeah, I definitely yeah. have to join this group. Hmm. Mm. Um, but like I say, that's just like a, a, another great thing to be able to converse with, like, you know, Tiffany that way as well and, and yourself and just, I think that really has kind of helped me feel a lot more happy in sort of like coming back to the hobby and, you know, getting a second sort of like wind of it and, and like 
just being able to have that sort of interaction as well, which, like I said before, you you know, first time round, didn't have the only the only information that I used to get was I we there was a comic comic uh, book shop in um, when I lived down south uh, near near London, um, and they actually had anime in there. And they, but they actually also used to have An America, which is a um, magazine. And that is basically how I found out before, like all the the net, the internet really took off. That was my main source, this An America magazine, um, because they ADV used to advertise in there as well. Oh, wow. um, so I was actually find out what ADV was released in America, and then that's when I'd ring off and ask them. <laughs> Um, and so that's why, like I say, and I can remember, it's really random, but I can remember like release date, American release dates and things like that. I'm thinking, oh, we got this so many months later and all of that. And it's really sad to, to be admitting this, isn't it? Really? But um, yeah, that like I say, and there'd be, there'd be a lot of, obviously a lot of titles that AZV would release in America, which we would never get. And I'd be like, oh, I wonder what that's like. And, you know, and just, just being absolutely fascinated. Like so pre eBay, so like yeah, yeah. So God, I'm trying to remember how I even managed to get hold of these titles. Well, I must it must have been Amazon, but <laughs> um, but yeah, I used to I, I managed to get hold of them all, and I remember being really excited when they said that they were releasing Elchia here because I'd read about it, um, and I was kind of like, wow, we're you know, and again, like I said um, in the initial um, chats that we had. You know, there was a lot of ADV released a lot of titles that were completely different to what the likes of manga entertainment were releasing, Kuzaki films, and all of that. So um, it really was, a, 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 um, you know, I'm not going to rose tint everything, but it was a, it was a great time in 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 you know in my life really, and I'm, I'm kind of trying to relive that a little bit. I'm so glad that I could have been a part of that. Yeah. And I know we could talk for hours. I'm definitely- I know, we've only got about five minutes left. I know. I know. I, I'm, but I'm glad, I'm glad that we've shared this and um, I want to do it again. You are a delight and dear to me. Thank you. I'm and so you. Thank you for being a part of this. And let's, let's schedule another time because yes. I think we could talk forever. You are- you've become my friend and um but um we will get cut off soon because that's yeah. what it does but yeah. uh um thank you for sharing this and let's let's schedule you again soon to talk more we'll see the dvds and um i'm sure you have uh, we're gonna have to talk thrifting because we're we're thrifting pals as well yes definitely absolutely mm -hmm.